What's up guys, it's your boys Awoki, back out with some more of the Chris Watts video case information. You get the gist. And we're going to be taking a look at a video from Real Killers, a great YouTube channel that I've been watching for quite a long time. And we're going to be watching their newest video of Lauren Arnold's interview with CBI, apparently friends with Shanann uh, Watts. Uh, I've never even heard of this interview until just now, but there's like... 50 of you guys that sent me this and said i need to watch this so we're gonna do just that so with that being said grab a chair get comfortable also make sure you guys go over to my ch well first my channel and real killers and subscribe to our channels give us the love that or give him the love that he deserves for putting together for this video to us to enjoy get scared and definitely find out more information when it comes to this case definitely don't forget to subscribe on my channel Hit the bell icon next to it. So when I do post videos like this one, you guys will get that little ring notification that I've posted that video. Then you guys can watch, comment, like, and share. And again, thank you guys so very much for that continued love and support you guys show on this channel every single day. I can't thank you guys enough. Keep doing what you guys are doing, and we'll continue to keep growing together. That being said, let's get into the video. 75 main. Backup needed. Agent Greg Zentner with the car. Friend of Shanann Watts since high school. Part of Bureau Investigation. Today is Thursday, September 6th, 2018. I'm not gonna lie. Why would they be investigating her? Like that, I don't know why they would investigate her, but again, let's continue. At approximately 9.46 a.m., it's an interview with Lauren Arnold in reference to her friendship with Shanann Watts. Let me make sure I got your name spelled right. Is it L A U R E N? Mm -hmm. A R N O L D? Yep. Do you have a middle name? Uh, my middle oh, yeah. Name, no. Okay. And can I get your address again? Okay. How long have you known Shanann? Since 99. Okay. So, How did you guys meet? We met in high school. We grew up in the same town. Well, I guess we didn't grow up in the same town, but we're from the same town. Oh, so, where's that from? Pinehurst, North Carolina. Because she was yeah. in North Carolina. They moved there somewhere around our freshman year. Okay. So, I met so it would have been, well, that was 99 when you met her? Mm -hmm. Don't they move there? I think so. I don't, I don't know exactly when they moved to North Carolina, but I know I met her our freshman year, which okay. was in 99. Okay. And uh, were you guys fast friends? Yeah. I mean, we stayed really good friends all throughout high school. So for the whole four years. And then after we left, we lost contact for a year or so. And then we, we met up again when she lived in Charlotte. We stayed in close contact ever since then, okay. and then we both happened to move out here. So just coincidentally, they moved out here first. Okay, um, say they. Who you who you referring to? Her and Chris. Okay, they moved out here. I think it was around five-ish years ago, and then my ex-husband and I moved out here a year afterwards. He's in the military, so we got stationed out here conveniently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So obviously you you met Chris. Yes. So, what about the first time you met Chris? Do you remember? Yes, my ex-husband and I went over there for dinner. It had to. It was like right when we moved here, so it was four, four and a half years ago. Yeah. So we're talking late 2013. So that sounds about right. Yeah. I'm trying to think of when I moved here. <laughs> yeah, I think it was either 2013, 2014. Okay. No, 2014. 2014. Okay. Yeah, we moved here in August of 2014. So okay. We went over there within like a month or so of us moving. Okay, so is that their house in Frederick? Yes. Okay. For dinner, you said? Yep. Okay. Okay. And anything, that was the first time you met Chris? Mm -hmm. Nicole okay. Atkinson. Did you go to their wedding? No. Okay. No, we were, I think I was in California at that time, so I couldn't go. Okay. So what was your first impression of Chris? He was really nice. He was, he was quiet, but he got along with my ex-husband really well. Because you know, sometimes husbands are weird with other husbands. Yeah, right. But they seem to get along pretty well. Mm -hmm. He seemed attentive and nice. Okay. Nothing unusual. Nothing struck you as out of the ordinary. Anything like that? No. Okay. And see, did they have Bella at that point? Was it Bella? Yeah, it was Bella. Okay. Yeah. She was a baby. Just brand new then. <laughs> okay. But you've been in pretty constant contact with Shanann. Yes. Be before that, so pretty much from... Early 2000s to the time that they moved out here. Yeah, yeah. Know. I mean, I talked to her, like, we did wedding planning over the phone. I mean, I, I've been talking to her pretty much the whole time. Okay. Did you, do you guys have a, much interaction with them uh, over the next few years? 
Within the last, like, few Yeah, within years. the last, uh, ever since this first meeting of Chris. Oh, yeah. I saw, I saw her more than him, but we pretty frequently would go over there for dinner or they would have gatherings and stuff all the time. So I was over there pretty frequently. Okay. If you had to estimate how many times have you... Did she ever talk to you about Thrive or anything like that? Yeah, that was definitely her, her, business, her business and her motivation for everything. I did it for a little while. This man had really my thing, like, but I, I guess I'm not real familiar with that. Can you I, I, kind of yeah, explain it's, to me? it's like a it's like a nutrition lifestyle. So you have these like shakes that you drink every day and these tablets that you take like and then these the patches bowl. that you wear. And the patches are supposed to be full of vitamins and I don't know, it was expensive to me, so I okay. didn't stick with it. But she seemed to, I mean, it, I could see where it was beneficial with her because, you know, she has lupus. So she was always on like her medications and she was sick for a while, but this seemed to kind of help her, you know, ment mentally and physically. Do you see a difference in her? Oh yeah, she had. I mean, she had a lot more energy, and she was she wasn't as like, sick and down. I guess you could say. Yeah. All right. Was that more of a function of a cleaner lifestyle, or do you think it was attributed to the Thrive product? I think it was both. It's kind of like when you work out, you want to eat better. Kind of. Like, I think it kind of went hand in hand. And do you know if, was Chris using that? Yes. She had it on that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think she had everybody else. <laughs> it's kind of the impression I'm getting. Yeah. So if you were contacted, if you were in contact with her, you were yeah. part of it. I mean, I gave it a shot. Yeah. I, I mean, it, I liked it. I just, I'm busy and mm -hmm. I just didn't devote myself to it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's, a, yeah, it's one of the things you gotta really commit to. Yeah, you do. <laughs> During any of, the, any of the times you were over at their house or had interactions with them, did you ever notice any tensions between them? They act weird towards, towards each other, anything like that, did you ever notice? No, no. They were kind of that, like, strive to be couple. They they seem to very equal, be very equal in the, the way they do things. Like she would cook dinner, he would clean up. She would feed the kids, he would help get them ready for bed. I mean, it just seemed to be a very working relationship. So they communicated my house. really well with each other, as far as I could see. They were affectionate with each other. Do you ever see any change in the level of affection? Kind of, yes. I don't know exactly when. What month is this? September. It's somewhere in the last six-ish months. He was a little more standoffish. Okay, so whenever I would go then. over there, usually, you know, he would be a little more interactive with us, I guess. And then the last, I guess, like six months or so, he would kind of just like stay to himself. Like he would come in for work from work and go upstairs and just kind of like distance himself okay is it just me or do we see a lot of like i'm looking at chris's photos and a lot of his eyes are just like dark like his eye reticle or not is it reticle is retinal is that what the right, right word is the pupil it's like dark am, am i just am i just seeing things <clears throat> and that was definitely different than what you were used to yeah because normally he was always around you know because we were always hanging out in the kitchen or in the living room hers the are right. or something like that like he's always there interacting with all of us mm -hmm. but i would i would say at least in the last six months or so he was kind of more isolated to himself okay so did you so let's say if, if this hadn't happened would would that have caught your attention i mean it did catch my attention mm -hmm. but I've been married before, so, I mean, it could have been, I mean, and I knew that they were having some issues, but nothing that would warrant any, you know, a worry or anything. Okay. Can you define issues for me? They, his mom was kind of a problem. They were His arguing. mom was? Yes, Cindy. they were arguing a lot about his mom. Shocker. What was that about, you know? It's kind of like a, the disrespect she had towards Shanann. Okay. 
and then it wasn't the other way around it wasn't shenan towards cindy cindy hated that her little boy was being taken away by shenan and she was not having it but then there's people that stick up for cindy why i have no idea and her behavior towards cc and her allergies and the way shenan would parent and she essentially was one of those like I feel like she's making stuff up kind of people. And so she was trying to prove Shanann wrong. And so there's just a lot of conflict between, you know, obviously because it's Chris's mom and then Shanann's mother-in-law, but they just, there's kind of a disconnect there. Do you remember any specific incident you could give me where this disrespect would come into play? It's kind of, I mean, she's talked about it for the last few years. I mean, Shanann has. Yeah. Her, his mom didn't go to the wedding, which was kind of an issue for Shanann. And then there's just always a resistance with the two of them. She didn't like talking to her on the phone because she felt like she was always being condescending towards her. There's just a lot of conflict there. So it sounds like that probably started early on in their didn't help. relationship. Right. She doesn't show up for their wedding. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty heavy duty there. Yeah. Okay. Did she, did she ever say that really bothered her? I mean, it bothered her, but I think she kind of knew, she kind of knew how she was going into the relationship. So I, mean, I think she thought it was going to get better, but I don't really think it ever did. Okay. Any other issues that you're aware of between Chris and, and uh, Shanann? The finances were obviously an issue. I think she kind of, she downplayed them a little bit, but it wasn't... You know, I knew that I knew they had filed for bankruptcy a couple years ago, mm -hmm. but she kind of presented it like, oh, well, it's going to help us, you know, in the long run. And it was, I mean, she worked really hard. So she, at one time, she did have two or three jobs at a time. So she was doing what she could to help provide for her family. But, but yet there never... are people out there that are like, oh, she's the one that's taking all the money away. She's doing, she's the one that's spending the money. Like, really? You're going to disrespect a woman that has been gone because of her husband's negligence in his marriage and wanting to bone and do butt stuff with Nicole, but yet you're going off on Shanann because she spent a little bit more, but she worked her butt off. Like you saw her in her phone doing Thrive, trying to make ends meet. Like she was doing it as well. Chris just wanted to do some butt stuff with Nicole seemed like stressed out about the finances she had just mentioned that you know they got behind on things and you know they argued about it sometimes was uh was chris a spender was shenan a spender did they both just let it loose you know how that the dynamics of that i'm not i'm not really sure about his spending i mean hers seemed to be it wasn't anything excessive i know that once they had kids, she obviously wouldn't shop for herself the way she used to. I mean, they had really nice things. You know, they pretty much had everything that you could imagine you would need in a household. They, well, I mean, he's they got it kind of things seemed now. equal on things. You know, she would buy furniture and he would buy like a new lawnmower or something. So, I mean, it was just, it seemed pretty equal. Okay. All right. But that was a source of tension. At some point there, like you mentioned that they had arguments about money. Yeah, I'm not, and I'm not really sure the exact nature of the financial issues. I just know I had mentioned my own, excuse me, and she was like, yeah, no, I understand. We're, you know, we're filing for bankruptcy. So it was kind of a, she didn't go into too much detail about it, but she did mention that there were some issues going on. Anything else that you can think of that would be classified as issues? relationship issues? Not really. I know their communication started getting a little bit, I guess, lackluster in the last few months because um, she was always in contact with him. So whenever she went anywhere, he always knew, I guess, like where she was. And they were on the phone a lot, especially if she was out of town or something. But he had cut conversations short a couple of times. I think it just kind of goes back to like him being distant of sorts. So did she travel much with her, with the Thrive business? Yeah, they traveled a lot. Okay. They, 
they had a lot of trips, and I say they because most of the time he went with her. Okay. So it was, it was kind of rare that she would go somewhere without him, unless it was, I guess, like the Scottsdale trip where it was just like a real quick weekend thing. But most of the time, whenever she went anywhere traveling wise, he went with her because it was kind of, they were in the business together. Okay. And were all those trips for business, any of those pleasure? Yes and yes. I guess with Thrive, they, you earn the trips, so they're, you know, they are pleasure trips, but I'm assuming there's conferences and stuff that go along with it, mm -hmm. and I think they're kind of both. Okay. So another reason that things could have been, well, yeah, okay, finances happen, but he was going on all these trips with Shanann, and, and probably spending time with her, and like, until Nicole got there... That's why I'm telling you, Nicole is one of the biggest reasons, number one, that their thing fell, but he got to go on all these trips with her, and I mean, hell, I wish I had that with my fiance, but nope, we only get it like once, twice a year, so. And my understanding is that she actually had a uh, car that was being paid for through the Thrive, is Lavelle or Thrive? It's the same thing. Same thing. Okay. Lavelle owns Thrive. Okay. Thrive is like the the nutrition steps thing. It's the brand, I guess. And then the company is called Lavelle. So. Okay. I'm not sure how that worked. Yeah, it was one of the levels that she had gotten to. Like you, you get to this bonus of sorts, and then they send you, I guess, like the amount of money of a car payment or something, and then that's how you pay for your car. Yeah, okay. I assume she's got a lot of people like working for her, I guess would be yeah. the way to put it. Yeah. It's one of the, it's like a, I want to say a pyramid scheme because that's not a nice yeah. word, but it's So I've, been, I've heard it called, compared to uh, like Mary Kay. Yes. Okay. Like you start and then you get people underneath you <laughs> and they get people underneath them and then it all kind of trickles back to you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now back to these, the short conversations in the last six months or so. Did Shannon ever talk to you about those? Or about the fact that the conversations were getting short? It's something I've noticed, or something I noticed. It would mainly come up, she was never really like, hey, I'm having an issue. It was me talking about, you know, one of my situations. And then she would kind of come in and be like, yeah, we're going through that too. So, you know, I noticed that, you know, he would call or she would call him and he wouldn't answer or... She would be real quick on the phone. Nicole. And you can just tell she was getting frustrated. Like she would call and ask a question like about dinner or something. And then a few seconds later, she'd be on the phone. And you could see that it was just one of those like with help kind of things. And then like he would come home and like I said, he would come in, say hi to the kids, say hi real quick, and then like go upstairs. You know, whereas before he would come in, hang out for a little while talk to her, go upstairs and like clean up and then come back down. But that all kind of, the behavior kind of changed a little Started bit. Started changing. Mm -hmm. And that's in the six month time frame. They, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever go with her on these business trips? No. When was the last time you actually saw Shenan in person? About... See like this guy that's doing the investigation? Why is he not doing that with, like, Nicole Kessinger? Like, he's asking great questions. I mean, some questions are a little bit more out there. But, again, he's getting to the point where, like, Nicole should have been or asked these questions. A week before they went to North Carolina. Okay, so it would have been, what, end of June? Yes. Does that sound right? I think so. I'm, I don't can't remember. I just know she was trying to get her packing list and everything ready for the trip. Okay. So I know it was right before then. Where did you see her? At her house. Okay. And how did she seem at that point? She was good. I brought my kids over there to play with her kids. It was just kind of something we did. I mean, she was, like I said, she was getting all of their stuff ready. She was asking me when I was coming back to her head again. She was asking about my parents. She was asking about the baby. Because she said she she told me she was going to be finding out what she was having when she was gone. If they were going to do and the gender reveal. Well, I'm having a boy. And you have to have a boy. But then it got and canceled. The, I mean, we kind of just talked about, like, pregnancy stuff. And she seems normal. So she 
knew at that point that she was pregnant. Yeah. How far along was she? Did she know? I have no idea. Okay. How did she seem about that? She was good. She was excited. She was happy. She was with the first two. Okay. And did she ever say anything about uh, how Chris felt about it? Uh, anything like that? Yeah, well, when she called and told me that, because she, when I got pregnant, I joked around and I was like, well, it's time for you to have one. And she was like, yeah, I know, that's what Chris keeps saying. So I know that's they Chris's had discussed idea. having another baby. Cece was really, she was a handful. So Shanann wasn't sure. And then, you know, once I got pregnant and I was like, it's time for you to have a third one. She was like, I know, you know, we're talking about it. And then she calls me all excited and tells me she's pregnant. And so, I mean, it was, I mean, I was excited. All right. <laughs> she seemed pretty excited too. Okay. But Chris was actually talking about having yeah. a third child. Yes, because he wanted a boy. So he was, he took that was that his away. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he even joked around. He was like, if we keep having girls, then we'll just keep going until we have a boy. <laughs> and what was Cece such a handful? She just um, an energetic kid or what? Yeah, I think because Bella was so, she was really calm, really quiet, and Cece was not by any means. She was, she's a hyper kid. My middle child, or I guess my now middle child, she was the same way. They say your first ones are supposed to be easier, but yeah, she was like fast and just all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's middle kids tend to be that way. <laughs> yeah. It's like they're predestined. That yeah, they just that's right. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So when she goes to North Carolina, do you have contact with her while mm -hmm. she's there? Yeah, we're, we're from the same hometown, so I kind of kept in touch to like, you know, who have you seen? Where have you gone? You know, how is your family? And go say hi to my mom type stuff. Talking like normal friends. Uh, is this all text messages, phone calls, Facebook messenger? All, all three, of it? All yeah. Three. Okay. We kind of communicate in all realms. Okay. And does she say anything to you about um, how things are going in North Carolina? Uh, assuming you knew that Chris didn't go with her initially. Yeah, I knew he was coming. Okay. Uh, was there, did she ever talk about a reasoning? I think he had to work. Okay. Because they had planned this trip for a while, and because Cece's birthday party and everything was kind of falling in that time, so she wanted to have time to spend with family and see everybody and, you know, plan a party and everything. So I knew Chris was coming, but I knew he wasn't going to be there the whole time. Okay. And that's just because he had to work. Right. Yeah. There's no way he could have taken six weeks off. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's a long time. Yeah. Did she ever talk about any issues that uh, had occurred in North Carolina while she was there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, like with her and Chris, or just like in general? Uh, but let's start with her and Chris. Any any issues yeah. that she would already mentioned or anything like that? Yeah. Okay. Did she ever say anything? You know, hey, the conversations are still short, or you know, or not talking, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about in general? I know she had a couple of issues with her mother-in-law. There was again, and it, it evolved or it revolved around CC and her allergies. Her mother in law had she had her, another grandchild over there, and like Shanann had asked her, you know, make sure that you don't have a, this list of things you can't have this in the house because she just recently found out how severe this allergy was, and she had found out that the other grandchild had this ice cream that had nuts in it, and. Her mother-in-law basically told her, well, you can't give her everything she wants. She's not the only kid here. And she's like, it's not a favoritism thing. It's a health and safety yeah. thing. And it just kind of escalated from there. I know she had mentioned something about someone trying to trying to give Cece, you know, a peanut to see if the allergy was real or not. I don't know if they actually gave it to her or what happened, but I... It was, it was this huge ordeal. And so she felt that it would be better if the kids didn't go over to see his mom without being supervised because she clearly can't be trusted with the safety of CC. Cindy did some weird so stuff. I know that man. was kind of the only thing that she had talked to me about. She was pretty stressed out about it, naturally. Yeah, no, that's understandable. So that, that caused quite a bit of consternation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else in general that you remember? Mm -mm. No. What about when Chris actually went to North Carolina? 
And I think that was about the first part of August. Yeah, I didn't really talk to her a whole lot. Actually, I don't even think I talked to her at all that week. Okay. Is there a reason for that or just because? Yeah, I, I went into preterm labor. Oh. So I was in the hospital for about a week or so. She reached out and texted me just to make sure I was okay. But other than that, like we didn't really have in-depth conversations. And then it was my daughter's birthday and my mom was here. So it was just kind of, we didn't really talk a whole lot in that time period. Okay. I actually didn't talk to her until the Saturday before she went missing. Okay. And was it, was that a phone call? Did we talk yes. to her? I can note of that. We'll come back to her. Did you see any of her Facebook posts during that first week of August while she was in North Carolina with Chris? Yeah. Is that an unusual strike about those? Different? No, I saw they were at the beach, and I saw... It's really hard to remember. It was actually them being at the beach. Because I didn't know when he when got Chris there. Was, but then, like, I the had thing? seen the pictures and stuff, and I saw that he was there, and I was like, oh, good, Chris got there. And then that was kind of it. Okay. And I think that she came back with the kids on the 7th. Does that sound right? Yeah, it was something like that. Okay. Because then she left... Like a few days later. Yeah. Is that when she went to Arizona for the, I guess, Thrive Conference? Yeah. Okay. You, it, was, it was just, that was just a weekend thing, right? Yep. I think, I believe she left like that Friday and then came back. Okay. Sunday night, Monday morning. Do you know who she went to Arizona with? I, the same group of people that I think she normally goes with. I know Nicole was there. I know there's a couple of other girls that were there too. I know Amanda was there and I know... Pretty sure Cassandra was there too. Okay. Nicole, do you know Nicole? Mm -hmm. Is that Nicole Atkinson now? Uh, okay. Yeah. Who's Amanda? Amanda Thayer. Okay. Hello, friend. And who's Cassandra? Cassandra Rosenberg. She, I, don't, I haven't met her yet. I've talked to her a bunch, but she, she's one of Shanann's friends from I don't know where they met actually, but she's in the Thrive business too. So. Okay. She, she, she moved here recently. Oh, she did? Okay. A few days ago. Oh, like literally recently. Yeah, like right before, it was last week, actually. Okay. So you last spoke to her on Saturday, August 11th. Does that sound right? 12th, yes. Okay. Do you remember about what time that was? No. <laughs> okay. No, it was kind of a quick conversation. I was asked her when she was coming back, and she told me, she was like, I'll be back late Sunday night, Monday morning. We were supposed to get together that week because she had her gender reveal party coming up. So we were, I was going to help finish off that. We were going to get the girls together for one more play date before everybody went back to school full swing. And then it was kind of it. It was kind of a quick conversation because I was like, you know, I just wanted to make sure she was going to be back before I started making all these plans. Okay. And then I messaged her Sunday. On Facebook page message. And this is the kind of thing right here. He's my rock. He's my everything. She, yeah, okay, she did, joked around, did a couple things here and there with Chris that some people don't do in their relationships. But like they were so hardcorely, hardcorely, is that a word? Hardcore on Shanann being negative towards her relationship. But Chris was just, he was, he was one of those guys that got tired of the old model and wanted the new model. That's what it seems like. Yeah. And I asked her, because I had forgotten what she said, and I asked her again when <laughs> she was going to be back, and she didn't respond. That was on Sunday? Yeah. And then... She did not <laughs> respond? No. Is that unusual for her to respond? Yes. But it was also like two in the afternoon, and I knew she was traveling, so yeah. it wasn't really that big a deal. Monday, I text her. Let me just... Stick with my notes Sunday here real quick. So okay. Sunday you had, you, you messaged her, mm -hmm. but that was the only contact you had with, or tried to have with her. Is that yeah, because that yeah, I knew she was traveling. I didn't know what time or anything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, well she's, I'm gonna give her time to get home, and I'll bother her, and I'll wait to see her. Okay. Okay. So now, so Sunday you have this. You send, try to send her a text, message, whatever. You get no response. Monday. Do you try to contact her Monday, or did she contact you, or anything like that? No, I, I knew she had a doctor's appointment in the morning. Okay. Usually, I talk to her afterwards. So, I waited. I text her around, like, 11, 30, 12, and I was like, how did everything go? Uh, like, when do you want to meet this week? And I just get a response. And then, 
somewhere around, it wasn't long after that, I got on Facebook, and I saw that her brother had said something about what she was missing. Remember about what time that was? I can find out here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the fact that she didn't respond to your initial text about her doctor appointment, was that unusual? Yes. Is she pretty good about returning the texts? Yes. She literally has her phone on her hip or in her hand at all times. Okay. Okay. I talked to her brother at, well, I don't just want to keep track of anything. Okay. It was around 2 o'clock. Okay. Is that when you saw it on Facebook? No. Or is that I, when you talked to it? I saw it on Facebook. So I talked to him about an hour after I saw it because he was like, hold on, I'll call you. Okay. And then I text him my phone number because he called me on Facebook Messenger because he didn't have my number. And then I text him my number at 2. So... I already know. So about one ish. I would say, well, I'd say like one thirty. One thirty. Okay. Yeah. And his name is Frank. Frankie. Is that right? Yeah. Frankie. What did you see on Facebook? He. Frank, I had to read it again because he said he said something like, you know, my sister's missing, and there's a picture, and she just left North Carolina. So I thought at first maybe it was one of those like she hadn't talked to him or something, so he was like oh, my sister's missing because she won't return my calls kind of thing. I went back and read it, and it was, like, it was legitimately, he, nobody can find her. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. So then I sent him a message, I think, on Facebook, and then he called me freaking out. And I was like, well, let me go by there and see what's going on. Because I'm the only person here from North Carolina, so I was kind of, besides Chris, but... You know, I'm kind of their only, like, go-to at this point. So I was like, let me go out there, and I'll let you know what I can find out. But I had to pick my kids up from school, and I didn't end up going out there until almost five. Okay. Did you uh, try to text Chris at all? No, I didn't have his number. Okay. Otherwise, I would have. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's why I just went out there. Okay. In the time that you spoke to Frankie... And the time you showed up there at 5 o'clock, did you see anything else come across Facebook or talk to anybody else? No. I... Tried to text your man? Yeah. I tried to text her. I called... I think I called my mom or something and let her know what was going on. I talked to a couple of our friends from back home just to see... Just to kind of get more of an insight of what's going on. When was the last time somebody saw her? Excuse me. Stuff like that. I got Nicole's information that day. Because so I had talked to her on Facebook before, but I never, like, I didn't have her number or anything. So I got that then so I could talk to her, but I didn't end up talking to her until later. Yeah. Okay. So do you, so you tried to text Shanann. Mm -hmm. Do you remember about when you did that? Do you still have those by chance? I should. Oh! No, I have. She has her text messages. I don't know what time. It would have been between... Two and five. She can I remember. Her. I don't think I would have texted her. Because Facebook's always the fastest way to go look her. Is that Yeah. Sorry, there's been a lot of it's okay. contact. Sure <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, no, I'm sure. Excuse me. Okay. No, the last one I have is from the 12th at 2.30. Oh, is that when she... That was, that was she didn't night. answer. Okay. Yeah, she didn't even open it. She, so do you have anything from yeah. the 13th at all? I don't think so. I don't know how I would have... I don't think I called her. Um, I don't know. Because like I said, I usually don't text her. I don't know. No, because my last text to her was from the 9th. Maybe I called her. I don't. I honestly don't remember. Okay. All right. Well, if you happen to stumble across those... Yeah, I have another cell phone at home. It's oh, a kid's phone, so yeah. I don't... Okay. Maybe... I don't know why I would use that one, though, but I can still double check. Okay. Yeah. If you happen to run across those, could you take screenshots of, yeah. of any times that you tried to get in see contact with yeah. and then send me those? It's funny to see all these posts and so forth and that she's posting about the child, that number three is on the way, and Chris is my rock, Chris is my love, and, and so forth. And Nicole did Google Shanann and Chris, but yet she said she didn't know. Was on the email and there's fine. Okay. So, yeah, that'd be great. I appreciate yeah. that. So when you went to the house about five o'clock, what did you see there? It was Chris and Amanda and Nick Thayer were there. 
I never met them, so I answered the door, gave me a hug. I asked the logical, like, are you okay question, and he said no. And then, I don't know, I started looking around, so, like, I saw her shoes by the door, and then I saw, like, her suitcase, and then I saw, like, one of the kids' toys under one of the chairs in that living room when we first walk in. And then I looked upstairs, I just glanced upstairs, and he said, he said something like, I had to close the doors. And I was like, what? And he was like, the doors upstairs. He was like, I had to close all the doors. He's like, because I can't, he's like, I can't handle going up there and seeing everything. And I was like, okay, and he was like, the toys and stuff. So we walk into the kitchen where the Thayers were, and I noticed that there were like toys and stuff in the living room. So my first thought was, so you could see the toys downstairs, yeah. but you can't see the toys upstairs. But, you know. Yeah. I asked him if he had heard anything, and I said, I asked him if he had gone and, like, looked around at all, and nope. Nick jumped in and was like, no, the police told us not to go search. And I was like, why? And he was like, that, because they said it wouldn't help. And then I looked at Chris, and I was like, so you haven't gone and looked anywhere? I would have been looking. And he was like, no, they told me not to. So that doesn't really seem logical to me, but okay. And he was wearing a like a tank top shirt. So I kind of naturally was trying to see if I could see anything and I didn't. I asked him, you know, when was the last time you talked to her? Did she seem weird when you talked to her? What time did she get home? And I was like, well, I don't know how this came up, but I was Even they thought the it was Chris said. right away. And he was talking about how they asked him who he called or like if he tried to hold of anyone. He was like, I called everybody I could think of. And I was like, well, that's funny because you never called me. And he was like, well, I, I guess I just wasn't thinking. I was like, Chris, I live 20 minutes away. I've known her the longest. You didn't think to call me. I was like, why? Well, I mean, you knew I was going to see her this week. Why wouldn't you just assume, you know, oh. I would have known where she was? Because I had to find out from her brother and that kind of irritated me. And he was like, I don't know. I called everybody I could think of. And when I did end up talking to Nicole, wasn't true because he didn't call anybody from what she said so that kind of irritated me a little bit because it did it didn't feel like he was trying of sorts but I also had to think okay well he's never been in this situation before I can't really judge his reaction but he wouldn't make eye contact with me when we were talking he kind of looked at the floor the whole time I don't know he just I feel like saying he acted weird doesn't really help anything but he just didn't, I don't know, he just didn't really act like seem Chris. concerned of sorts. Because I was trying to ask all these questions, because I was like, well, I'm going to go drive around. And he was like, no, they said that wouldn't help. Well, I'm going to anyway. Like, I can't not to at least go try. See, and she was being a friend. I remember we kind of stood there awkwardly in the kitchen, I think with the dog for a little bit. The dog wouldn't really go near him, which wasn't really unusual because the dog didn't like him anyway oh, um, okay. he, but, the like, dog knew deed or no he was especially just not hanging out with him i asked him if there's anything i could do if he needed anything he said no he said he was gonna try and go back to work on tuesday like the next day and i was like i don't think you should do that and he was like well i can't stay here and i was like i understand that but i don't think going to work is a good idea i would have I like, never well, gone to work i asked him if the police told him to stay at home or if he could, you know, go search or whatever. And he was like, no, they said I could, he said, they said I could go do whatever. That's what he said. He was going to try and go to work. I was like, don't, don't do that. Take time he off. He just kept saying how he didn't want to be in the house. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go drive around, you know, let me know if you need anything. Keep in contact. Let me know if you hear anything. And then he walked me to the door and hugged me, and then I left. So that was. So I think you described him as just kind of being weird. Can you expand on that a little bit? It was. It wasn't that he was sad. I mean, because that's kind of what I was expecting. I was expecting him to be like visibly like emotional of sorts, but he seemed really just like confused almost. Like he, I said, he wouldn't make eye contact. So whenever he would talk. He would look kind of down at the floor. So it was almost like he was in a daze and just talking. Like he just wasn't, there was no 
what I felt like there's no connection. You know what the funny thing is too? Is Nicole did the exact same thing. And between him and what was going on, he was just kind of physically there and just talking. Yeah. Was his, di was his demeanor that day different than <clears throat> other days we had seen him? I mean, he wasn't like smiling and happy or anything, but then again, there was really nobody there. It was kind of... He was smiling on the he news. He was just very, like, nonchalant, almost. Tell me about the shoes at the door. They were her black flip-flops, and it was like, she kicked them off, like, right at the door. Inside the front door? Mm -hmm. Okay. And... So it was like a pair of his work boots, and then, like, her shoes. Okay. Did she always wear those shoes? Uh-huh. Those flip -flops. Her, Yeah. They're her favorite shoes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She, like, orders a new pair, like, every year. <laughs> And that's, I've heard that she wears those constantly. Yes. <laughs> so for them to be at the house and her not to be there, would you say that's unusual? Yes. Okay. And, I, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah. No, it's... Oh, what, yeah. okay. this investigator actually says what he's... Like, this investigator should have been questioning Nicole. I like how this guy is. And you mentioned the suitcase. Yeah. Where was that at? So when you walk in, the there's a staircase, and then there's like a little space like beside the staircase, kind of, there's a little table. So in between the table and then like where the stairs began was like her roll suitcase and then like a tote bag that were like right up against the wall over there. Okay. Roll suitcase, like a carry-on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what color was it? Oh god, I have no idea. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Did you see her purse anywhere? Mm-mm. Okay. Did you see her car in the garage? No. Did you go in the garage? No. It would have, but I felt like it would have been awkward if I was like, hey, can I go look around? Yeah, right. Yeah. So we made that comment about closing the doors upstairs. Mm -hmm. What was your thought process when he said that to you? At first, I thought it was weird that he had mentioned it because I kind of just looked upstairs. And it's sort of a habit when I go in because, like, you're... Your eye just kind of automatically wants to look around, I guess. And yep. so from downstairs, you can see, like, their bedroom door. You can kind of see a little bit upstairs. So I just happened to just, like, glance and look around, and the door was closed. And he just volunteered the information that he went up there and closed all the doors because he didn't. He couldn't go up there, and he was like, I just can't see did, What's did you here? comment about the doors being closed? Yeah. Was that unusual for the doors to be closed? Stuff? Um, when, was that something you'd even pick up on? No, no. I just, like I said, I just happened to glance upstairs and I looked and then like, I went, like, I guess I looked back downstairs and he was like, oh, I closed all the doors. I was like, okay. And then he just kind of went into the explanation that he couldn't go up there and didn't want to see, like he could, he said he couldn't handle seeing their rooms or something and the toys and everything. And I was like, okay. So the door that you could see that was closed. Which door was that? Their bedroom door. So the, the master bedroom? Yeah. Okay. Could you see the girls'? See, I mean, I, I would have if I would have looked already. over. Because their rooms are on this side. Mm -hmm. and, their, and the girls' rooms are on this side. Because he said how many times that he was texting Nicole on these trips that they were supposed to be doing. Their room was right there. So I would have had to, like, looked. Because I wasn't, like, far enough in the house yet. But if I would have kept walking and then looked up, then I would have seen their doors were closed. The world of evil. She said. And he mentioned something about their toys. Yeah, he said he couldn't handle right seeing their stuff. He said that going up there, excuse me, and seeing all of their stuff, he's like, I can't be up there. But then I noticed, like, when we went into the kitchen and I looked into the living room, there was a bunch of toys and stuff in the living room. So my first thought was, so you can handle seeing toys and stuff downstairs. You can't handle seeing anything upstairs, which kind of, I don't know irritated me not really irritated but it was just it just didn't make any sense to me okay so at the time it makes that comment to you does it strike you as unusual or do you do you pay attention to it did you kind of brush it off no i definitely paid attention to it okay because up until that point i mean nothing was besides them being missing nothing was really weird about the situation and then once i got to the house and I saw that her shoes were there, and I saw that her she luggage was still knew. downstairs, not put away. And then he made that comment, like, right when I got there. It was just very, it just didn't feel right. So something's striking you as unusual. Oh, yeah. About the situation. Yeah. Are there normally toys scattered around downstairs? Not if the girls aren't home. If 
the girls are home, then yeah, there'll be toys and stuff downstairs. But if they're not home, then Shannon cleans up everything. She's kind of she busy, me free. Yes. Okay. This, this would have been the the Friday before. Um, I think you mentioned something about you were looking at Chris to see if you could find any injuries. She knew. Tell me a little more about that. I just, I noticed that he didn't have sleeves on, so I just kind of, as I was talking to him, I was trying to see if I could see anything. So, like, I looked at his hands, and he was kind of sitting at an angle, so I could only see, like, one side of him. So, I looked to see if, like, there were scratch marks or bruises or something he had stuff on his like arms right here. or whatever, and I didn't see anything. So, something's triggering you to, to look at, yeah. to see this. Yes. So you, you you think he's done something? At this point, I do find his behavior very suspicious. Lauren yeah. knew. Is there anything specifically that's triggering it, or is it a kind of a combination of everything? It's kind of a combination. It's it was a feeling that I had gotten I like his demeanor, his random comment about the doors being closed upstairs, him not wanting to go look for her. It just everything kind of piled up together. To I just way. I don't know. I just it didn't feel right. So I've heard from other people that he's not an overly emotional person to begin with, but I think you, you described him on Monday as not emotional about the situation. Right. Could you tell a difference between the two? I mean, I've never really seen him in an emotional situation before. So normally whenever I would see him, it was for like Super Bowl or a holiday or a dinner party or something like that. So I've never had to see him having to use any emotions besides being happy. And like I said, I I can't really judge a person's reaction to a situation that they've never been in before. But when your wife and your kids are missing, you just kind of expect She's someone to be out. at least sad or anxious or no, he's laughing know, just on some the porch. kind of something. And he just, he was, there's nothing. He just... There was just nothing there. So if you're just, if I were to describe it as basically flat, yes, would that be fair? Yeah. Let me let me throw something out. So from your experience, would it be normal for somebody if their kids and wife are missing? Would they be flat like that, or would they be hysterical? I mean, I feel like there should be a medium in between the two okay. because I think it was. Late enough to where he wouldn't have been hysterical anymore, but it was still too early for him to have completely shut off his emotion. So I feel like while I was asking him questions or talking about them, like I feel like he should have expressed some kind of something. And I just, I wasn't getting Nothing. anything from him. He just, I don't know, it's like almost robotic, I guess. Did it appear that he'd been crying? No. Did he expand any more on why he wasn't going to go look for them other than the police told not to? That's all he said. Well, that's what Nick said. Because I asked Chris, and Nick answered for him. And I was kind of like, okay, well, I was talking to Chris. So they wouldn't let me, I don't want to say let me, but I wasn't able to talk to him by myself. So who else was there with him? It was Nick and Amanda there. So they stayed with him yeah. the entire time? Because I tried to talk, like, I tried to talk to him in that living room area before we got to the kitchen. And then, you know, Amanda came in and, like, introduced herself. So I never really got, um, I don't want to say alone time, but, like, I couldn't talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. It was the three of them. And I didn't know them, so it was kind of awkward. But he answered the question for Chris about why they weren't going to search. And then when he mentioned... Uh, wanting to go to work the next day. That's I was wrong. like, so you want to go to work, but, not but you're not going to go look for them. Kids and that was when Nick was like, well, the police told us not to. Like, I know you said that, but it doesn't mean you can't. You don't have, like, that doesn't mean you have to. Like, you should at least want to go look. And Chris was like, well, I don't see the point. And then he was like, I just, I can't stay here. So it was really like, it was kind of conflicting because. He wanted to leave and go to work because he didn't want to be at home. But he didn't want to leave to go look for them because the police said that it wasn't going to do any good. So. Why would Chris, I was saying say about no. the 
girl, does the medication still the being there? Bed. Anything like that? Talk mm -hmm. about the medication for the girls or for Shanann. Mm -hmm. um, were you aware that they were on medication? Mm -hmm. And that was for? Well, Cece had her medicine for her allergies. So there was always like the EpiPens. I don't know what all Shanann was on, but I know she, with her Thrive routine, she had like her shake every morning and stuff like that. So all of that was there apparently. She never like, and there was no dish in the sink, it. so she didn't like have her shake that morning. She didn't give the girls breakfast, so that was kind of unusual. Do you know if she takes any other prescription medications? Not that I know of. I'm not really sure. She ever talked about having migraines? Yeah, she hadn't had them in a while. I think I know when she got pregnant that she was having migraines more frequently, but that happened in her last two pregnancies also. Okay. And my understanding is she recently had some neck surgery. Uh -huh. That was last summer, is that right? Mm -hmm. What was that about? I don't even know what it's called. My mom had the same surgery. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I know that like they went in through the front and they did something with her oh. her spine and then she was in a neck brace for a few weeks. She seemed to recover pretty fast. Okay. Any, uh, any major complications with that that you're aware of? No, she just hated wearing the neck brace. Not sure. It didn't seem like a whole lot of fun. Yeah, she said it didn't go with any of her clothes. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see. So, anyone else at the house when you were there? Mm -hmm. Just the favorites, Chris, and the dog. Okay. When do you leave the house? I was there for maybe 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. The kids were in the driveway in the car their tablets so I didn't want to like leave them for too long but I didn't want to bring them in either so couldn't stay for too long but I mean I guess at that point there was really nothing I could do. What do you do when you leave? I go get gas at the gas station down the street. Okay. I kind of took the long way of sorts so like so I kind of drove her. through the neighborhood a little bit She's to, looking. to see if I could find anything. I drove to where I could see like the back of their house because I couldn't remember if there were houses and stuff back there yet because when they first moved out there it was nothing but a field they were starting to develop so I wanted to see kind of what was going on back there just to look around to see if I could see anything just because I wanted to find them so I drove around the neighborhood She's being a good went friend. got gas and came back to my house I thought about going to talk to the people at Starbucks if maybe they had seen something, then I was like, well, they would have had a shift change, so it wouldn't have been important. Or was she anything. regular at the Starbucks? No, she didn't even drink coffee. Oh. <laughs> but you never know. I don't know. I just, she there's so many like fields and stuff out there. I was like, there's no way I could go and search all this by myself. So I was trying to think of like who I could call to like come back out there and maybe look in the area. Because there's just, there's a lot of land out there. Right. So you went and got gas and drove around in the neighborhood there. What do you do after that? I went back to Aurora. Okay. I called her brother. Where Nicole is from? That I had just left the house. I talked to him for a little while. I asked if they needed anything. I think I probably got back on Facebook to see if she anybody had there. said anything. See anything else on Facebook that anybody had an interest? No, it's more the reposting of his, like, my sister is missing type thing. It spread pretty quickly. It, I don't know, I called my fiance and was like, excuse me. I was like, she hands missing, I just left the house. And then he was mad because I'm out there by myself. And I was like, well, it's, it's Chris, like, he's not, he's not going to do anything to me. They thought you wouldn't. I don't know why I went home and I think I called another one of our friends from back home to see if she had heard from it, like heard anything. And then I kind of just stayed on my phone and... Did you have any contact with anybody else involved with this? Did you talk to Chris at all? I didn't talk to Chris after that day. Okay. I talked to Nicole the next day. That was the 14th? Yes. What did you and Nicole talk about? I asked her how Shanann was when she dropped her off. I asked her, was she sure that she made it inside? And she was, she said yes. Yep, she I said she watched, watched her it. walk in and close the door. I asked her if like her and Chris had been fighting that she knew of. I, I mean, 
kind of all the like standard questions. Like, have you heard from her? When was the last time you talked to her? And she did the same to me. What was the last time you talked to her? Did she say anything to you? And then we kind of both started to like worry more after talking to each other because she usually talks to one of the two of us at least every day. And so now that it had been pretty much 24 hours since we knew that she had at least gotten home and nobody had heard from her, we automatically knew something was wrong. Because even if hypothetically she had decided to run away and take the kids, she would have at least contacted her family to say, hey, yeah. hey I'm, I'm over okay. here, I'm okay, yeah. I just had to get away. She's not that kind of person, but she would have contacted somebody. So that's when we knew that something just, it just wasn't right. Let me back up to yeah. Monday when you go to the house. So we talked quite a bit about Chris, the you know, toys in the house and suitcase. Anything else at the house unusual that you notice? Anything strike you as unusual? No, I'm... Um, place? What about that blue bag? It was really quiet. No, it wasn't... No. <laughs> so on Tuesday, you and Nicole talk, and you're... Are you convinced at this point that something has happened? Yes. It, what about Nicole? Is she in the same boat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do at this point? We still try, we were trying to coordinate getting a search party together. We didn't know really where to start because it wasn't really, we don't have a whole lot to go on. So we didn't know where to start. And we were waiting to see what happened because we knew the, the dogs were coming out to the yeah, house. Smile. We saw that Chris was doing an interview. I talked to her mom a few times and smiling. to see if maybe you, she could tell me where to go look. It was just kind of a, like wanting to do something but not really knowing where to start kind of situation. Do you guys actually get a search party organized at all? No, we never got that far. Okay. Are you still trying to contact Shanann? No, I'm not at this point. I knew the police had her phone, so there was really uh... no point in trying to contact her. She doesn't have her phone. Right. And I knew that on Monday. You knew the police had her phone on Monday? Uh -huh. Okay, how did you know that? I don't know. I think I, either her mom told me or her brother. Because they had, I'm assuming they had talked to Chris. Or they talked to Nicole because Nicole was there when the police got there. So I'm pretty sure it's her mom that told me that they had her phone. Okay. So once, once I found that out, there was... So there wasn't even a point in trying. Did Shanann wear a uh, smartwatch? Yes. Did she have that on her all the time? Yes. Did you ever go back to the house? No. Anything else about Tuesday that you remember doing specifically to try to find Shanann and the girls? No, I I started getting all of the phone calls and stuff from reporters on Tuesday. How did, they, wow. how did they put you together with her? I had made a post on Facebook. If you see anything, if you know anything, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't even know how they got my phone number. <laughs> I good at it. Yeah, so it's their job. Yeah. So a lot of Tuesday and Wednesday was not talking to reporters. So it was like random texts and phone calls and being driven crazy by all of them. Sure. So watching the news a lot, <clears throat> seeing if we could find out anything. Yeah. Okay. Are you talking to any of her friends? I kept in contact with Nicole. I talked to her friend Christina that lives in Hawaii because she talked to her all the time. So Hawaii. I was, you know, we were communicating back and forth because she was like, let me know if you hear anything. I'll let you know if I hear anything. Checking on her parents, making sure they're okay. Her best friend in North Carolina, I talked to her a lot. Things that Chris should have been There's doing. a lot of phone calls and texts and I don't know. I don't know anything. Those are frustrating days. <laughs> sure, sure. I can understand that. Okay, so anything else about Tuesday that kind of stands out for you? No, no. I think we I think the we saw the interview Tuesday night. Hmm. What was your impression of the interview? <sighs> uh, it was disheartening, I think. I knew exactly how I watched this interview. He was still kind of emotionless, but the emotion that he did have was not the right emotion. I feel like he was almost cocky in the interview, and that was like, kind of alarming to this. me. I think that was, like I said, I, 
There's no like correct behavior for the situation, but that was a wrong one. A lot of like some of the things he was saying didn't make sense. Was there something specific that I mean, make sense for you? No, it's li- it was little things like he called everybody he knew, which isn't true. You know, he, he rushed home as soon as he found out, which isn't true. The cops Just had to call the him. The way he said some things. So did Nicole. He wasn't saying. It was just all very. It's like he had tried to like rehearse it, but he didn't do it right. It sucked so it. it just it came out odd. It's like he was trying to convince everyone that it definitely had nothing to do with it, but he was conveying it in like a happy way. I don't know, it was it was weird. Anything else about the interview? No, just. No, I don't think he should have done an interview, but, you know, it's not my call. Yeah. So what are you thinking about the entire situation at this point? Like, at that point? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. I had, I, at that point, I had a very strong feeling that he had done something. But yet, it's still kind of hard to believe, because he's just, he just isn't that person. So... The person that I knew and the person that was kind of on TV are two completely different people. Like his behavior and his mannerisms and everything were just really different from the person that I had known. So I could, it was I was trying to figure out, like, does he just know something or does he, did he actually do something? And that's what, you know, we were kind of trying to work through Tuesday and Wednesday. And it's just, it's still one of those you don't want to, believe that he actually had anything to do with it so we didn't know anything but from what we did know everything kind of points to it seems like he had something to do with it are you talking to your fiance about this yeah what's he saying he was i mean he was pretty surprised at the whole situation he'd only he had met chris a few times and they got along really well because i think the three of them were like the only Steelers fans in Colorado, so they got along really well. He, you know, he kind of asked me, he's like, do you, like, do you think he did it? Do you think something happened? You know, what do you think? And I'm like, I, I don't know. We I do. don't, there's nothing tell it, like, there's no evidence saying yes, but my gut feeling is different. So, so let's go to Wednesday. What do you do Wednesday? Anything? That you can think of that's related to this, or you kind of talk to the friends more. Yeah, it's mainly deflecting reporters and talking to friends. Kind of, you know, it's been a couple days now. Like, what do we do next? How do we? How long is this going to last? I it was either Tuesday night or Wednesday. I set up a fundraiser to, you know, help because I know her parents wanted to come out here. I would want to be out there. So I was trying to help oh, yeah, exactly. raise money to get them out here so they could help with the search or, you know, anything like that. So I was I was getting the fundraiser stuff set up, trying to, like, walk her mom through bank accounts and stuff like that. That's a GoFundMe. It was, the, yeah, it was the Facebook fundraiser. Oh, Facebook fundraiser. Yeah. So let, let me back up just a smidge. So prior to Wednesday, what do you hear as far as progress of the investigation? Anybody telling you anything? You're anything about the police? I, yes and no. I talked to Amanda Fair. I don't remember when the dogs came out. That had to have been Tuesday. I was on the phone with her because she was still with Chris at the house. And she said that the dogs had just left. And I was like, well, what happened? And she said they didn't find anything. I said, well, how do you know? And she was like, because they didn't say anything. And I was like, well, they're not going to tell you if they found something. She was like, well, Chris isn't a suspect, so they would tell him. Okay, clearly you don't know how these things work, but okay. I was like, so you're sure they didn't find anything? And she was like, no, they didn't find anything. And I was like, okay, so what else? She was like, they searched the house, you know, they did a thorough search of everything. She was like, they didn't find anything, so we're going to take Chris to our house. Okay. And that, I kind of, like, knowing... The little things that I know about law enforcement and stuff, I feel like when they don't tell you anything, then that's when there is evidence. So in my mind, them saying nothing to him said more. So 
I kind of started to like internally freak out because feel like there was more going on than what they were. The thing that bothered me too is he always said that he hated laundry, but then all the laundry was done. Letting out. I know there's something about the bed sheets not being on the bed, and that was a huge red flag to me. Who who told you about the bed sheets? Nicole. Did she tell you how she knew that? She was inside the house. Did she comment about that being as usual? She was upstairs. Only after I said something. What did you say to her? I said, that's not right. (laughs) She was like, I know. Just because of how Shanann is, she wouldn't, like, her bed is never, like, stripped. So, like, if she's remaking her bed to wash her sheets, she makes her bed again. Like, she would have just left it all unmade like that. So her bed's always made? Yes. What about the kids? Always made. Sometimes, like, it's either right after they get up or as soon as she gets home from taking them to school. To school. But I mean, she does all of her cleaning and stuff in the morning, so her house is always really clean. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> She All right, so Wednesday, clean of that house. more of the same, dogs and reporters, talking to friends. Yeah, I had the the Facebook page set up, excuse me, so I had, like, the fundraiser and the Facebook page. I don't know, Wednesday's kind of blur. It was just, my phone was just going off like crazy. Just constant people and questions and, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. That's kind of why I wanted you to. Come down here in person to see yeah. that we weren't trying to jack with you. Yeah, no, I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I have to so, be careful. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. So, let's see. Anything else about Wednesday that uh, stands out in your mind? Uh-huh. So, I assume at some point on Wednesday you hear about Chris being arrested. Yes, her mom called me. Her mom called you. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what's what's your initial reaction to that? I think I had a panic attack. <laughs> Did so. Not like a severe like one, down. but yeah, because up at that point, I'd been like, you don't know what's going on. Like, they're, they're just missing at this point. But then once he gets arrested, you know, kind of makes everything a little bit more real to the, the worst case scenario. So I talked to her mom and then maybe 10 minutes later, it was like all over the news that he was arrested and
I don't know, it just, it just doesn't add up. So, I don't know. <laughs> that, okay, yeah, if you can't think of anything else, I think we'll call that good for now. Okay. If you think of something, would you uh, either give me a call or send me an email? Yeah, and I'll try to find that. Yeah, if you happen to. the 13th. Yeah, if you would, I would appreciate that. Yeah. That's the thing, too, is a lot of this still doesn't make sense. Um, Chris definitely worshipped the ground that his girls were under. He definitely did worship the ground that Shanann was under until Nicole came in. I'm still led to believe that Chris was not the doomsday of his girls uh, besides Shanann. He was the one that took out Shanann. I still think to this day wholeheartedly, education and for entertainment purposes, only... I think, in my opinion, that the girls were taken out by somebody else. Um, watching some more other things that I've been watching, that somebody else could have been involved. Jim, this Troy. I mean, there's just things that, like, code name Fire Stick. Like, things are just not adding up, and we're putting things together, and things are adding up here, but they're not adding up over here, and then they're breaking, like this case is just so obnoxiously wrong and they closed it and they're okay with that. That's why a lot of us YouTubers are trying to find the answers and it's so hard to find them because there is evidence that's locked away and we can't get it. <sighs> so please comment down below what you guys have thought about this interview. I definitely think the interview was needed, but again, it was more or less to confirm things um, that were happening in Shanann's life, Chris's life, the distancing, the the parental problems that Cindy and Ronnie were doing to Shanann. And then, yeah, it just it just confirmed a lot of things. So um, leave a like for obviously reasons of the, the Chris Watts case being 100% solved and the justice that one day we'll see NK being interrogated properly. Uh, don't forget to subscribe on both channels, The Real Killers and Channels of Wookie, and we will see you guys in the next video. So please take care, keep it safe, and as always, keep nerding on, and we'll see you guys next time.